So resin stabilizing, turning blanks is something that I wanted to try for a long time. Just never really came up because uh, I don't really turn like ever. So I guess I could make some turning blanks and then just look at them. <laughs> but I have a uh, interesting opportunity here. My friend Dima makes these brass uh, hammers and they have a resin stabilized handle. So we'll be able to make some blanks for him to turn a handle for one of his hammers. And I have a hammerhead here. It's a really nice little piece of brass. It's made out of hex stock that we cut here in my shop. He gets the like giant 12 foot long sections of hex brass. We cut them up into individual blanks. So this is how they kind of start out looking. This is a little off cut from one of the brass rods we cut. So he adds a nice round over effect on the end. It also breaks the edges a little bit and puts a hole in them to receive a stud that's going to connect the handle to the head. So in the past you've seen me stabilize wood using this stuff, penetrating epoxy. I used that on the gentleman's valet box where I stabilized the panels because they were super mushy and pretty much rotten. So we're going to do something very similar to this today, except we're going to use a slightly different product and process. We'll be using this stuff, which is very popular among turners. This stuff cures using a heat source, whereas this just cures under a normal chemical reaction like you would see with epoxy. So this stuff will not start to cure until you heat it above the curing temperature, which is really powerful and um, really helpful for this because it allows you to have as much time as you need to get the wood to absorb as much of this product as possible, thereby infusing that piece of wood with as much resin as it could possibly handle. So you can imagine if you're able to infuse a piece of wood, it becomes way more dense and way more structurally sound. So I have a couple examples of um, infused things here in the shop. So Dima made me these two mallets. I think this one was like three or four years ago, and this one was like two years ago or something like that. They are well, different sizes. You can see the head on this one is much bigger than the head on this one, but this guy here is much heavier than this one is. The other thing here is that the resin infused head, this one happens to be cherry, is much more durable. So I actually used this when I was building my bandsaw mill, so you can see all of the little bit of damage here on the end. That's just from me hammering on bolts and pieces of steel and transfer punches with a wooden mallet. And this thing is held up uh, pretty ridiculously well for the amount of abuse that I've given to it. Um, something that's not infused like that, especially at a cherry, would never hold up that well. So another example here is this turning mallet. The head is a cherry burl. Burl, of course, since the grain is growing in all different directions, this would be probably a bad choice for a mallet because that grain would be pretty weak. But since it's infused with resin, that allows it to be really solid and structurally sound. And you can actually use this as a mallet without having to worry about, like, a chunk of it coming out as you're smacking on your carving tools or something. The other thing here is the brass hammer. So this is an earlier version, probably one of the prototype ones of the hammers. And this is a boxed elder burl, and that's also stabilized as well. So it almost has a stone appearance because you're able to put such a high polish on it because it's a lot harder than it normally would just left as wood. So if you want to fully infuse a piece of wood with resin, we need to essentially replace all of the air inside of a piece of wood with resin. Wood is very porous, it has a lot of open space inside of it, so there's a lot of air in here, and there is also a lot of space for resin to go, which is why you'll see the weight of these things increase so much as they absorb resin. So the easiest way to do that is to use a vacuum chamber. We can put the, uh, the blanks or blocks of wood in the resin, put it in the vacuum chamber. The chamber is going to pull all of the air out of the wood, allowing the, uh, the resin to flow down into the wood to be soaked in all the way and just fill all the pores, all the voids, everything gets filled with resin. And since we're using a stabilizing product that does not cure until it's heated, we can leave it in the vacuum chamber for as long as we need to to make sure that that piece of wood has absorbed as much resin as it's ever going to. So for these handle blanks, I have this chunk of spalted maple. It is very light. It should not be this light. It is, uh, is pretty far gone. So we are going to totally stabilize this, make it structurally sound, and make some pretty awesome handles out of it. Um, we're going to see this thing really come to life. It has a lot of interest in color. And if this works out pretty well, I have a lot more of this. I also have some stuff with uh, quilted maple. This actually all used to be quilted maple. 
before it rotted. <laughs> but uh, I got this piece as well as a bunch of other chunks that I've been sitting on for a long time um, from Nielsville, Wisconsin. Every time I go visit my in-laws there, they have the local yard waste dump, like not that far from their house. I always go there and see if there's any interesting logs or trees out there. And about six years ago, I picked up this stuff. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start getting this thing cut up into blanks for the handles. And those blanks are going to be inch and three quarters square by three and a half inches long. I'm going to try and get the most number of handles I can out of this block of wood. And hopefully we'll have a few to kind of choose from. So I think some of these are going to make some really interesting handle blanks. There's a lot of really interesting spalting going on in here. Uh, before we move on, I do want to get a starting weight on these just because I'm curious to see how much weight we're going to add to these guys. So currently, it looks about two and a half ounces for a blank. Three on that one. Two and a half. 2.6. All right, so now I need to get this resin ready to go. This comes with an activator. Because this is uh, heat sensitive, it won't cure as a single part until you uh, mix it in the activator. That way you can store this thing at whatever temperature you need to. But once I add this, it has to be stored below a certain temperature, uh, 85 degrees. So I'll probably put this inside after this. Sometimes it gets hotter than 85 out here in the shop even here in Minnesota. So let's get these guys arranged in the bucket here. Now I do have a decent amount of dead space in there. If I was smart, I would have got some like marbles or something to take up the space, but this stuff is reusable and I'm hoping that I'll be able to fully submerge these. Otherwise, I'll have to find something to displace some of the resin, but I'll probably end up dumping this entire container in here. All right, so you see those start to float. So I have my little weights somewhere. You can already see how the resin is pushing the air out of the piece of the wood. So that's pretty cool. Got some more resin. I'm going to top it off some more because it is going down already. So this has been sitting for about eight minutes now. The bubbling is slowing down. And the level has dropped quite a bit. I'm kind of curious to see what this actually looked like, though, because I can't help myself. No, that's that's going to be pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Put that back down in there. So I'll just top this back off, and then we can get this thing into the vacuum chamber. I'll put a lot in here. I can always put it back in the container when I'm done. Ooh, that's heavy. Looks like uh, I'm making soup or something. <laughs> I'm gonna pop on the lid and then start up the vacuum. It's really soupy. So as I'm doing this, I gotta watch it to make sure that the foam doesn't overflow into the chamber. So I'll let the vacuum come up a little bit. I'll release the vacuum, get the foam knocked down, and I kind of repeat that process until the heavy bubbling stops. I don't want to speak too soon, but this is at full vacuum now and it doesn't seem like the foam is getting that high. So I might be fine to sit here and watch it without having to worry about it overflowing. So the pumps are running for 15 minutes now. I'm just going to go ahead and shut the pump off and just leave it sitting here under vacuum. And we'll just uh, see how long it takes to stop bubbling. So this has been sitting for three and a half hours now and there's not a whole lot of bubbles coming up anymore. I'm going to give it a little shake to dislodge anything that could be under there. I seem to dislodge some more. I'll probably have to sit for 
another half hour to an hour or so and check back on it again. For about five hours, just got the kids put to bed. I came out to check on this thing and it looks like it's not bubbling anymore. So it should be good to go at this point. So the instructions for this product is to leave it sitting in the resin for at least twice as long as it was under vacuum. So that means I let this sit out here for 10 hours in the liquid after I release the vacuum. So I'll do that real quick here to start letting some air back in. So it's about 10 o'clock at night right now, which is kind of nice. I can just leave this out here overnight. And then tomorrow we can pull these things out of the resin, get them in the oven, and get them baked and cured. So these have been soaking for quite a long time, probably about 18 hours. That's just how life goes sometimes. No more air bubbles or anything coming out of these things. So time to get these things out of here, wrapped up and stick them in the oven. So I picked up a cheap toaster oven and I also got a oven temperature gauge thing in here so I can make sure the temperature is actually accurate based on the readings over here and mine is off. So this is set like 175 which actually produces 200 degrees which is what this stuff actually needs to cure. So this stuff needs to go in the oven for about two hours. So I'll just set these in here and two hours they should be cured. Hi. What's up buddy? What are you doing? Making, um, I don't know, like wood baked potatoes. I'm going to go in the shop. You're in the shop. What? So I kind of changed things up a little bit. As you can see, I have kind of two batches going in the oven right now. As I got that first one in there, it just seemed like there was just too much in there and they're sitting too close to the heating elements. Uh, this looks like they're going to get too hot. So hopefully these are all right. So I thought we'd open these up and take a look and see how they look. Well, you can see how cool that looks. Not too bad, huh? So I did already go ahead and unwrap one and just clean up a little bit, skim off the excess resin, and this is what the blank uh, looks like. That's just looking pretty incredible. I'm really, I'm really excited about these. These should be some really, really awesome handles. And just to get an idea of where we're at as far as weight goes, 5.6. So double-ish, it's pretty much double the weight as before. It is really ridiculously hard. So I got them all unwrapped and cleaned up and looks like I got four pretty decent blanks. This one's kind of a maybe. It's got some pretty big voids in here still. This might need some uh, actual epoxy to go in there to fill those up before this gets used. But uh, I'll get it prepped and we'll see. So I'm going to get these things ready to go for turning. The next thing on here is going to be drilling for and installing the threaded rod, which will connect the handle to the head. So I'll cut some threaded rod down to size, drill the hole in the top of the blank, and then epoxy that threaded rod into the blank. All right, so I'm here in Dima's shop, and he's going to turn one of these blanks into hopefully a viable handle. We'll see. We have six of them, so hopefully one will work out. I'm looking forward to seeing this in person because every single time I hear you talk about how fast you're at this, it kind of scares me. I'll slow down for the video. <laughs>
shiny. So pretty cool, we went from something super punky, super soft, and pretty much unusable to something that actually is uh, usable, functional, and absolutely just beautiful. So I'm really happy with the way this one here turned out. I ended up making six blanks for the hammer handles. Uh, five out of six worked out, so I have one here. The other four already have found homes, and then number six didn't quite work out that well. Uh, I must have drilled the hole for the stud off center because it's not at the right diameter down here. And it's full of voids anyway, so this is one of those, the ones I didn't think were going to work out that well anyway. So, no huge loss there. Now this is really just scratching the surface of what's possible with this whole process. And for instance, you could do different colors as well, so if you wanted to add a dye or another coloring agent to the resin, as you're doing the casting, you can impart color into your blanks. That's another thing you can do with this. Again, this is just like the basics, I guess. Um, and it doesn't have to be super soft or punky. You can, of course, infuse resin into something that's totally solid and fill up all of the voids or just airspace in a solid piece of wood that's not soft and rotten <laughs> and make it much stronger and much more dense. And it's a whole another thing. I think this will try next. I have a lot more of this resin. So as you can see, this can really go a long way. I used about a quarter of this jug and this stuff is super soft and absorbed a lot of resin. So if you're doing something that's not like uh, rotten like this, this will probably last you for uh, a decent amount of time or at least a decent amount of blanks. So I do want to say a big thank you to Dima for helping me out with this video and making that turning look uh, ridiculously easy and simple. But uh, I know if I was doing it, it would never go that quickly or that smoothly. That's for sure. So thanks so much Dima for another mallet to add to my collection. If you want to check out Dima's stuff, I will leave his links down in the description. And if you want to purchase one of his hammers, there'll be a link to that as well. So I think that's all for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the stabilizing or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.